After about three years of using the same Home Assistant dashboard, I learned a lot about what my wife and I find most useful in a smart home dashboard. I previously shared my dashboard on this channel with a focus on how I was using it as a smart home control panel on a wall-mounted tablet. This dashboard was built on the UI Lovelace minimalist theme, and honestly, I still think it's great. But three things prompted me to start from scratch. First, my minimalist dashboard was 100% based on YAML code. I manually typed in 11,277 individual lines of code to create it. Yes, I did count them, and yes, I wish I had that time back. But it wasn't just the enormous effort to create it. It was also the time it took to make changes. I was constantly shuffling around code to make one widget appear in a certain spot. While this type of dashboard provided infinite flexibility and customization, maintaining it occupied too much of my time and it stopped being fun. Second, my minimalist dashboard wasn't resilient enough. There were too many times where breaking changes brought my entire dashboard crashing down. When you've invested countless hours into something and suddenly it's totally broken, it can be a scary feeling, especially if you live with others who also rely on it. I couldn't rest until I got it all up and working again. Third, Home Assistant Core releases just got better and better. Dashboards in particular saw a ton of useful improvements with the introduction of sections and drag and drop functionality. It finally got to a point where it was customizable enough that I decided to leave my YAML dashboard behind for a simpler one that I could create in the UI. And while that did mean starting over, it gave me an opportunity to make an even better smart home dashboard based on three years of learning how my family actually uses one. For me, that's the important thing about smart home dashboards. There's no single best dashboard layout because we all use them differently. There are some dashboards out there that I think are really incredible, but they're not right for my home. Having a dashboard that dynamically updates to only display content from the room that you are standing in is super cool, but that's not how we use a smart home dashboard. I am using conditional display of some content though, so stick around and I'll show you. For my family, the smart home dashboard has two primary objectives. First, provide quick information at a glance about the current state of our home. Second, allow us to take action in just a click globally across the home. My wife, kids, and I may be spread across the home at any given moment. We want a dashboard that prioritizes visually what's happening across any space with the ability to make changes if needed. There are at least two dimensions to any smart home dashboard, the visual design and the layout or navigation. My home assistant dashboard's visual design uses mushroom cards. I'll leave a link to Mushroom Cards in the video description if you'd like to check it out. I personally think Mushroom Cards are more attractive and modern looking than the default Lovelace cards in Home Assistant. For the layout, I'm using Sections. Sections only recently became the default view type for Home Assistant dashboards. This view lets you organize your dashboard into cards that appear as sections on a grid. There are two features in particular that I love about Sections. First, everything is drag and drop. I can move one card or section of cards by dragging and dropping it to a new space. On my older dashboard, based entirely on YAML code, this was a much larger effort. Second, changing the layout width of a card is as easy as dragging a slider. No need to enter code for grid patterns. I love this. It's never been easier to get started with Home Assistant, so if you've been on the fence due to its perceived complexity, I just say go for it. All right, so let's take a spin through my mobile Home Assistant dashboard layout. It is organized into three basic sections, chips at the top, a security section, and then a room section. Let's go through them one by one. So first, the chips at the top. This is quick information about the location for me and for my spouse, where we are. I can see how many lights are on in the house. I can see how many ceiling fans are on in the house. I can see how many items have been added to our grocery shopping list. 
And finally, I can click here. I can apply announcements across the smart speakers in our home. Let's look at these a bit more closely. The lights, I can click into here and it says two lights are on. These are the two lights that are on behind me right now recording this video. It, they even reflect the actual color of those lights. But I can go through and quickly access any light in the house. Uh, I have a few other things on here besides lights, such as ceiling fans, smart shades, and some additional automation overrides. But the main way we use this is to access the lights and secondarily our smart shades. Right now I have the shade closed in the basement bedroom, so it says closed right here. If I click lights or any one of these subheads, it'll take me right back to that main screen of our dashboard. I can click ceiling fans and get direct access to any of our fans. I can click and I can turn them on and see they're on from animation right here on the icon or go back in and turn them off. If I click fans, I go back again to the home screen. And here, as I mentioned, is our shopping list. And then over here, I can play announcements in the house. I can click this and I can type in any message and it will just run across the smart speakers in our home. So right now it just said, this is a test behind me on our Sonos smart speaker. The second section is security. Here I can see quick information about the state of our home's alarm system, if any of the doors in our house are locked or unlocked, and if the garage door is open and closed. Here I intentionally add some friction. I could just have it be a one click to lock or unlock or open or close, but I wouldn't want it to mistakenly unlock uh, a door. So here you click once and you get more info to click again to then take action, say unlocking this lock right here. The same is true for the garage door. I can open and close it um, or for adjusting our home's thermostat. I can click the security header here and I can see if any window or door is opened in the house. I can even see a snapshot of all of our security cameras or I could click into one camera and get a live view of it straight away. Clicking back any one of the subheads, I return to the main screen of our dashboard and we can look at rooms down below here. These are all the rooms in our house for each of them. You have the room name, you have the current temperature and Fahrenheit and the humidity percentage in that room to get a sense of the room's comfort in that moment. And if a light is on in that room, it's indicated by this amber color right here. I am currently in the basement bedroom. So I see the light is on, these are the lights behind me. There's even this red motion badge that displays. This means occupancy is detected in that room. And that's me because I'm in the room right now. So no other room has occupancy detected, just in basement bedroom because I'm the only one home at the moment. If I were to walk into any other room, I would get this red badge there as well. So for in just a glance, I can see if anyone is in a room of the house, if a light is on or not in any room of the house and what the current comfort level is in that space based upon the temperature and the humidity. In my previous version of a dashboard, I could click into each room and see all the devices and sensors and speakers, what have you in that room. I didn't use that. This is what I use it for right here. It's just to see if lights are on or off, who's in the room, if someone's in the room and then quick, quick, take quick action by just pressing once to toggle a light on and pressing again to toggle a light off in that space. The other little trick I have here is I can double click any one of these to turn off the lighting automation in that space. Maybe you're not feeling well, you're sick, you wanna lie in bed earlier in the day. You don't want lights coming on uh, when you're trying to rest in bed. So I can just double click on any one of these rooms and now it says off. Off means the lighting automation has been disabled and is now off in that space. I can double click again and the light automation is now running again. You could use that for any automation override that you wanna put into place in your home. Now, I do have one kind of hidden feature here on the garage. If I long press on the garage, it tells me the real time price of gas at the nearby fuel stations around us. That way I know which fuel station to go to to get the best price. That's the only room that has kind of that hidden long press feature. I could do more of that, but then it becomes complicated and hard to remember sort of what does what across the rooms. This way it's all consistent. You click once to turn lights on, you click a second time to turn the lights off. 
and you get a red badge if motion is detected in that space. If I click rooms, then it takes me to all of the lights in the house, all the fans in the house, all of the smart shades in the house, and a few additional automation overrides that we use quite infrequently. Um, but the main purpose of coming into here would be to interact with a particular light, to adjust it in a different way. I think that's pretty rare that we would need to do that. What I love is that I can see the entire dashboard in just one screen right here. There's no need to click into submenu after submenu. 90 plus percent of everything that we do just occurs right here on the screen. And I get immediate information about the state of my home, security of my home, the comfort of my home, where people are in that home and who's home and who's not home. So here I'm on the computer looking at my home assistant. And if I want to edit this dashboard, it's so easy. I click the pencil icon in the top right. And now I can come in and I could just drag and drop anything. I can take this living room card and I can move it over here into security, hit done, and that change is automatically applied. I can take it again, I can just drag it back and put it back in the rooms, hit done, and that change is applied. The other thing here is I have some conditional chips and cards that I only want to show under you know, specific circumstances. If I click edit again, you'll notice that. So now this Christmas card appears under rooms. So basically in the month of December, when we have our Christmas trees and holiday lights out, this additional card will appear and it allows me to just toggle on and off all of our Christmas lights. I don't need that up year round now. I only need that up one month a year at most. So I like how I can make that conditional and only display when I want it to. The other thing that's conditional are these chips at the top. You can see there are additional chips here for our dishwasher washing machine, dryer, and two robot vacuums. What this means is if the dishwasher is running or if the washing machine or dryer are running or if the robot vacuums are out and about cleaning, then these, these icons will also appear on the dashboard. That way I don't have to wonder, wait, did I, did I start the dishwasher? Sometimes you forget if you did something or not. I can see on the dashboard if the dishwasher or laundry machines are running and it displays kind of the real-time energy consumption being used by that machine. Or I can see again, if one of the robot vacuums is currently running about the house. I don't need these chips visible all the time. I only need them visible when the machine is running. So if I click done, they're invisible right now because those machines are not running. But if they were, they would appear right here at the top alongside the other chips. If I take a look at one of these room cards, look at the basement bed, for example, I'm using the mushroom template card for each of these room cards. That way I can really dial it into my preferences. You could do a simpler approach than this, but this way I can, I can control the color of the light on the card. I can, I can add this badge on it for motion detected, etc. So if you kind of go down here, you can see the icon color is based upon the lights in that room, I tell it to make it orange, otherwise have it be disabled and if no lights are on. I tell it here, this is that double click for the basement bedroom lighting automation. If it's clicked, if it is off, show basement bed, but if it's on, show basement bed uh, off or vice versa. You get the point. And then down here, the secondary information for the temperature and humidity sensor in that space. And then down here, these are the motion sensors that dictate if that occupancy red badge should be on or not. And the color of that badge can also be customized. And just to give an example of how making a card appear as conditional, here's the dishwasher. And it's conditional based upon this visibility tab. And I say, if the power minute average is above one, that means the machine is running and then display the card. I have the Emporia view monitoring the electricity consumption of most of the circuits in the house, including things like the dishwasher. And that's I'm able to know if the dishwasher is currently running or not. And if I wanna add a new card or a new section, it's as easy as just clicking this plus icon and then searching for the particular card that I want to add and then just clicking that item and now I can start editing and adding it in right away. So that's a look at my updated Home Assistant dashboard for 2025. 
I don't expect it to be everything you want in a smart home dashboard, but hopefully it gave you some ideas for your own setup. Let me know in the comments what you found most interesting about my dashboard or any cool features of your own. If you're interested in taking a tour of my prior dashboard on a wall-mounted tablet, I'll drop a link for that. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, consider becoming a member using the links in the description. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.